I'm here with Andy Rice, who's the editor of SailJuice.com, and we're at the Cows Sail GP, where we just watched three spectacular races. Now, Andy, what was your view of the racing overall? Um, the, the, these boats were pushed beyond their limits today, particularly at race one. We saw a very early pack size in the Americans. I thought that was going to be the end of their day. Luckily, well, they didn't make it through race one, but they were back up and running again. Um, and the Brits, they, they looked really strong while we saw them. And then nasty nose dive, Chris Draper lift out of his cockpit like a rag doll. Um, thought he was injured and that was the reason why they weren't able to carry on but it sounds like it was a technical problem and that's why unfortunately uh, the British crowd here, which is pretty enormous actually, um, didn't get to see a proper performance by the Brits today. But they did see some fantastic selling by the Australians in particular and some really good one-off performances by China and the second and second race. And before the race, you caught up with Tom Sleepy. What did he have to say about the racing here? Yeah, well, I, I think I interrupted his quiet moment. He was just walking through Southampton by himself, just collecting his thoughts, ready, ready for a really big day. But then there was a journalist that got in his way, and I, I was asking him what he was thinking about. And um, he said the first race is going to be the hardest because uh, the, the way the tide was turning throughout the day. So unfortunately, they got the hardest bit first. They didn't get any sort of warm up into it, and that's exactly what we saw. We saw USA on that bear away capsize. I mean, it was pretty sketchy for all those boats on the first bear away, and it, it looked like they were still getting their eye in on what was going on. Um, and he, uh, he said, uh, basically, it, it's going to get easier, but it's all a relative term. Nothing about today was ever going to be easy. And the Australians, what we saw out there, their boat handling, it was exceptional. What do you think was the main difference that meant that they were just ahead every single race? Well, I, I do think all of this in the end comes back to how much experience these teams and the helmsman in particular has of uh, steering these, these high speed, high performing boats. Obviously, he's got Bermuda 2017 behind him working on board with Jimmy Spithill on the, um, the, the Oracle boat. And uh, Nathan Outridge should, should have been able to give him a run for this money that they had problem with their pedestal, they weren't able to operate the boat efficiently. So the pattern is really disappointing that they were sailing around sort of um, only three or three miles on the wagon. So I think everything really just comes down to who's got the most boiling hours under their belt and Tom Slinsby and Nathan Andrews are still the standout candidates for the and things like that. And having an event like this at Hours Week and being able to see Boats coming across the finish line at over 50 knots. What must this be like for the sailing public and the general public? To see? Yeah, I mean, you do have to remind yourself that these are purely wind driven machines. You just, uh, after a while, it's easy to think, well, there's a motor there or something. Just that it's purely driven by the wind. I, I just think it's, it's phenomenal. It was also the, 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 the finish of the Great sail pass. What has been a really good turnout. I was really impressed with the number of people that came out to watch today. So hats off to the promotional team here, the marketing team of South GP. They've done a good job of cheering people up for an event. And the many thanks to the team design. Great to see the racing. Thanks very much, Mark. Thank you for being involved.